In this video, we're going to see how to add a map to our Android app. Just like this, you see we can add a map and we can put markers on the map, and the markers can have labels as well. So in this first video, we're going to see a simple way to do it by creating a new map activity and letting Android Studio walk us through some of the steps that are required for that activity. And then we're going to start that activity with an explicit intent. In a video that follows this, we'll refactor what we do in this video to use a common view model with live data. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm in my Android project that we've been working with so far in this video series. I created a new branch called Maps and Notifications, and I also have a new button that I've added to our button bar, which has an image of a map on it. So those are some things I've started with. Now, let's let Android Studio do a lot of the work for us. I'll right click on this package where I have my existing main activity. I'm going to choose New and scroll down and then choose Google and Google Maps Activity. So a little tricky to find, but that's where it is. Now we'll make sure that yes, it's Kotlin and Maps Activity is fine and we'll choose Finish. And go ahead and choose Add. You notice Gradle Sync is in progress, which indicates that it has updated our build.gradle. Another thing it does is creates this Google Maps API XML file, and I really like how it has some very visible instructions here where we need to open this in a browser and create a new key. We create that key and we paste it where it says your key here. I'm going to go ahead and do that process now. When I click, it comes to this wizard page where it asks me to select my project. So I'm going to look for my plant diary queue, which is the one we're using now, and continue. Next, it prompts me to create the API key, which I do here. Once I have the key, I simply paste it right here. I've obfuscated the key a bit, but you can see it usually starts with this capital A, capital I, and then lowercase c, lowercase a letter, something like that. Now I mentioned prior to starting this video, I created a new button called BTN Map on our main fragment. So now I'm going to go back to the main fragment and I'm going to have that BTN Map handler open our map. So you see the on activity created function of main fragment and down here I have the BTN take photo, BTN login. I have all my button handlers. So let's say BTN map and then set on click listener. Now we want this button to open the maps activity because remember the maps activity is the class that was created when I right clicked up above and I said new and went all the way through that whole thing where you said Google and then I said Google Maps activity. That Maps activity class is the artifact of that. So what we want is an explicit intent that says we explicitly want to call this Maps activity. We'll do it like so. Val intent equals intent and then context. We have to give it a context and then we have to tell it what explicitly we want to open. So Maps activity colon colon class dot Java which is how we explicitly identify that maps type. And then we simply say start activity and we pass in that intent. And that's how we start that up. Now we've previously done start activity for result, which means we expect to hear something back. Start activity is more of a fire and forget. It means we simply want to jump into that intent and go. Now let's take a look at maps activity. Maps activity is pretty straightforward. One thing that it does is it creates the map here and then on map ready means we've heard back from the map and we're ready to look at it. Now I'm starting the app in the emulator so we can see what we have so far. You notice we have this map button over here. I'll click on this. It renders the map with one point on it. If you look at the code, you see here the default code puts it at Sydney and then moves camera there. But nonetheless, we can still use the mouse pointer to scroll around on the map. Let's update the map to include GPS points of specimens that we've GPSed. So you see right now it's just giving us this default of Sydney. If we go to our main view model, we'll remember that we have a listen to specimens function, which listens to specimens from Firebase Cloud Firestore. So first of all, I'm going to grab a couple of Firebase settings and we're going to put it into our maps activity. Now I will tell you this is somewhat temporary because I'm going to refactor this in our next video and I'm going to use um, live data instead. But nonetheless, this will get us set up uh, so that we can take a look at this example. So go back to my main view model and we see that we're going to listen to specimens and just gonna borrow that and paste it over here. Now, what are we doing here? We're listening to Firebase Firestore 
And anytime the specimens are updated, we're getting a collection of all the specimens. And at the moment, we're iter iterating over that collection of specimens from Firestore. And we're adding them to a collection called All Specimens. We don't want to do that, so I'm going to clean this up. What we're going to do is when we iterate over these specimens, we're going to create a marker out of them. And we're going to add that mar marker to the map. Let me just uh, refactor and clean up a bit here. Okay, first of all, Currently, the default is put it in Sydney. This could be anywhere, so let's just call it marker. And also, we certainly don't want to hard code the latitude and longitude. Let's get that from our specimen instead. So we'll say specimen.latitude, which I'm storing as a string, so we're going to need to say to double because this method is expecting a double. And then we're going to say specimen.longitude, and then once again, to double. And then instead of marker in Sydney, we're just going to say specimen string. So we'll get the two string value for that specimen. Let's see how this looks. I decided to add a couple more protections here. First of all, make sure that the latitude is not empty and make sure that the longitude is not empty before we do that parse to double. Nonetheless, I have started the application in the emulator. Let's see what happens when I click on the map. We see it comes into our on map ready function. I'm going to go ahead and choose F9. And then we're, we hear back from Firebase here on snapshot not equal null. And now it's going to go through and talk to each one of our specimens and create a marker for each one of those specimens. If we go back to our emulator, we can see that sure enough, we have a couple markers. And generally, I wasn't changing the latitude and longitude as I was adding new specimens. There are actually markers on top of markers here. But nonetheless, you can see our uh, Austrian pine. Uh, in or near Cincinnati, and then feather reed grass looks like that's near Washington, D.C. So you see that we have our map, and we're populating it with markers. Now, there's quite a bit that you can do with a marker. At this point, all we've done is we've given it a latitude and a longitude, as you see here, so a place where it belongs, and then we've given it a string that will show when the user looks at it or when the user clicks on it. And you see that string here, feather reed grass, a beautiful ornamental, ornamental grass, an Austrian pine sapling. That is essentially the two string value that we're getting out of the specimen. So you remember long ago we made plant name description latitude longitude in that specimen two string. And that's what we're seeing here. There's a lot more that you can do with the marker as well. So that's really where the flexibility of maps gets really neat when you see all the different things you can do with the marker and with the, with the marker point as well. So hopefully this is a good intro. One thing I will say I'm a bit nervous about is that a lot of this logic from on map ready, we simply copied from our main view model, a very similar function in main view model, this one right here. So we're violating the technical debt rule of duplicated blocks, or in other words, do not repeat yourself. In our next video, we'll see how we can refactor this a little bit to use a true model view view model with live data so that we just have one source of data and we don't have to copy and paste code. So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.